The movie begins with the Asian family. With the rule because they gave birth to you, you must listen to everything they say. As we're introduced to Maylin Lee who study hard to make her parents happy. Hey Rook, I do the cartwheel, I uh... She's an 8th grade student and her best friends are Miriam, Priya and Abby. Yeah, I'm gonna go Huh? What's up, man? Interesting they made the Korean chick of anger issues and a strong personality. But they're not wrong. Blah, 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 blah. May is a straight-A student because she wants to be the doctor and not get the bamboo stick. While her friends be like, Damn, who that? Huh? Mmm. Huh. Mmm. Crushing on a dude named Devin. Ugh. This is real, man. <gasps> Four town. Take this. Hiya. Uh. Now, one of the biggest criticisms for this film was that it was too mature for children. When, if anything, it's a realistic depiction of what adolescent girls go through. Even when I was in middle school, girls were going crazy for Justin Bieber, One Direction, or Edward from the Twilight series. So how is this any different? So the film got hated on for being too realistic. And when May's friends asked to go karaoke, May rejects it. As her life revolves around her mother's validation and approval. Bye, call me. See ya. Ugh, I never liked her. And May hurries to help her family's temple. Oh, hello, hello! And when she gets home, we're introduced to her mother. May May, you okay la? You get A+. Plus? Here, have a dumpling. Are you doctor? I got A+. Plus. Check it out. Wow, one day you make me money. I'm a slave. Then both mother and daughter pay respect to their ancestor, Sun Ye. Huh? You do the graffiti on wall? I kill you. I'll do your taxes. As the duo work together to show the family temple to visitors for a living. And when the work is over, they come home to May's dad cooking dinner. Oh yeah. Now what I found relatable about this film is the dad taking a submissive role and the mom being the dominant one. Except the difference is both my mom and dad didn't cook. So I didn't grow up with a lot of home cooked meals. Then Southern Raid, Four Town says they'll be touring America and Canada. <gasps> oh my gosh. Imposters, why do they wear makeup? And with May's mother expressing her distaste for the boy band. That same night, Mel draws one of the members and realizes it looks like Devin. Winky. Oh. I wonder what we look like together. Oh. <laughs> I draw more. May May? Ow. Oh, uh, shit. Uh oh. You want snack? Don't look down. Ah. Uh. Hmm? Oh, your notebook. You do homework? What the hell? Ugh. Oh, oh, uh, May May, you write this shit? No, it's April Fool's, mother. Uh, is that the ruser from Daisy Mart? Uh, mother, no. I, uh, where is he? Ma, found you, bitch. You, minimum wage bastard. Oh, no. I heard you like to be the mermaid. Ta-da. What? Huh? Huh? Weirdo. <laughs> I'm a mermaid? Ghosting under the sea. Let's go, my little May May. What the fuck? Oh, I hate my life. And during that same night, Mei Mei has a weird dream about red pandas. And the very next day, Mei discovers she is a red panda. Shiba! I'm hideous and I have a belly. <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up. <gasps> She's having her period. Wait, don't come in. Why can't you just get out? Excuse me, bitch? Well, I got you pads. My porridge, shit! Then Mei Mei goes to her room and finds out if she calms down, she turns back to normal, and if she shows emotion, she's a red panda again. So she calms down, wears a beanie, and goes to school. With her mom having no idea about the red panda. And rumors have spread Mei is a pervert. Ah, she might wait, who that? sha -da -la, -la, -da la la Wow. Then she sees her drawings everywhere and loses it. <laughs> Devin, my manly man. I kill him. Poof, poof. Oh no, I got a gap. Hiya. And while Mei Mei thinks she's safe because it's math class, she finds out her mom is by the school making a scene. And with the other kids interested, she'd be like, My retro dumpling, you forgot your pads. Oh. Yo, why is this grown-ass man acting all weirded out over pads? It's just pads, it's normal, nothing to act all grossed out over. Ugh. Kaboom. Ah. And miraculously, none of the students or staff saw May turn into a red panda except her mother. So the May runs away la and go hide in the bathroom. What? Oh. My. Stay back. <laughs> I need to go home, get the spring roll and the dim sum. As her appearance made an Asian open his eyes. <laughs> Mei Mei, <gasps> what the hell? Don't look at me. I'm ugly. What? It happened already? What did you say? She. So her mother says, Long, long ago when the men went to war, your ancestor Sun Ye want to protect her kids so she prayed and became a red panda. And then she passed her powers to every female in her blood run. And that is why you are gay. Thanks to her. I hate you. There's a cure. <sighs> really? 
Her mom then says she went for the same thing. And next month on the 25th, a ritual will take place during the Red Moon, where they can seal the Red Panda away forever. But despite the reassurance, Mei Mei thinks she's a freak and hates this new change. And the next morning, Mei Mei tries getting rid of the panda, but fails to control it. Then her friends pull up to her crib. No, you can't come in here. But Four Town is coming to town. What? Uh, huh. Come here. You better keep your mouth shut, okay? Okay. Relax. It's so fluffy. <laughs> I hate how I rock. I never met an ugly like you, and nobody likes your body, including you. Fuck you. I hate you guys so much. So our besties comfort her by singing together and reassuring her that she's loved. And thanks to this, May is able to control it a bit more. Here. Ow, Abby, what the hell? Something different. Ow, I hurt my. And because Mei doesn't transform, Miriam tells her to come to the concert on the 18th and they will be all asking their parents. Do you rack my teeth? And later the parents test their self-control. Ready. Deforestation. Hmm. Mm. You get second place spelling bee, you failure. Hmm. Rass test. Meow. Oh, so cute. I must fight it. Then Mei thinks of her friends and is able to pass the test. Uh, what? I just have one request. No, never gonna happen. What? Look at that filth of all that glitter. Ugh, so cringy. Okay, thanks for listening, bitch. Oh, I hate her. Huh? What the hell? Who does she think she is? Honey, it's your mother. Ah, shit. I'm coming for Mai Mai. And at school, Mei finds out none of their parents said yes to the concert. While Mei's mom continues to keep an eye on her. <laughs> little mama's girl. Iseki. <laughs> How about you die, you little shit? Yo, if you look closely, it burned his hair off. And at this point, Mei is fed up with her mom. As they plan to go to the concert disguising it as a sleepover. So they try to find a way to make money to get the tickets themselves. And when Abby wants to hug the red panda, Mei gets caught by the other girls. You are the cutest thing ever. Please take my money. So the girls decide to hustle and raise $800 in two and a half weeks, which includes Mei lying to her mom about joining an after-school club, and use the time after school to sell photos, hugs, and red panda merch, turning every kid in the school into the furry. Yo, how do they not get caught by any of the teachers or staff? As Mei continues to hide this version of herself from her parents. I hate making merch. Well, too bad, because we're a hundred short. Y'all need money? Come as a red panda for my birthday. I want 200 bucks. Okay. Damn, all right, give me a second. And after talking with the girls, she's like, all right, you got yourself a deal. But when Friday comes, the Asian aunties and May's grandma visits. What? Hello, May. She fat, yes, yeah, she gained weight. You look chubby, also chubby. Ladies. My God, you got fat. But we'll take care of you. Meanwhile, Tyler's party is dead as May eventually excuses herself to bed. And in the process of sneaking out, she breaks a family photo and leaves the window open. Then heads to Tyler's to get the money for Four Town. I honestly appreciate Pixar so much for creating a film that highlights the childhood of what many Asians with strict parents go through. Where they're unable to be themselves around their parents knowing it will disappoint them while constantly chasing for their validation and feeling like you're never good enough. So to me, the red panda represents the ugly part of us that our parents wishes to get rid of. A side of us they never want us to show or acknowledge. And with a score of 68%, Turning Red is ranked the top 5 worst Pixar films as I'll explain the end how inaccurate of a rating this is. Mei Mei? You sleep with window open, I uh... I clean up for you, uh... What the hell? Huh? Shema? B plus Tyra party. Mai Mai. <gasps> and while the girls celebrate, they hear the concert is at the 25th, not the 18th, the same day as the ritual. Anya, look! May 18th, Toledo! Not to mention you can literally see Toronto right under it as the 25th. Oh, boy, you got bitching on Anya? I'm gonna get mad so no one gets mad at me. <laughs> no, 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 no. May. What? We had a deal. You can shove the deal up your ass. At least my ass isn't as flat as a bed sheet. Ah! Oh, shit. Ah! What is going on over here? Please don't hurt me. Please. Oh, I didn't mean to. Damn, she a freak. And with May's mom apologizing, once everyone goes home, she takes it out of May's friends. That they manipulated her sweet, innocent child's mind. She is a good girl. May, tell her. But I'm a pussy. What? Dude. I told y'all. Now, I can't relate to the scene since my parents taught self-accountability and that everything is my fault. But I can understand Mei for not wanting to lose her relationship with her mother. Cause she want that Chinese New Year money. And at the day of the concert, the girls go by themselves with the money Mei raised, by the way. While Mei gets ready for the ritual. Then the dad sees Mei's real self for the first time and laughs. Going into Mei's room to share about her mom's rebellious red panda side. Mom did what? She fought for me when grandma didn't allow it. Then tells Mei to not hide or be ashamed of the side of her, but to embrace it. So the dad was mom's greatest enemy this whole time. Cause the mom wants to get rid of the red panda for good. Whereas during the ritual when Mei tries to get rid of it, with the old man like bzzzoom sucking it out, Mei remembers all the good moments she had with it and that it's a part of her. So she's like, no, and reunites back with it and now fully embraces the panda. It's okay, we can do it again. The fuck you say? Mei Mei? 
Kill yourself. Goodbye, mother. I feel like the scene is symbolic of how controlling a lot of Asian households can be while Mei representing one who no longer lives with their parents, but instead started to live for herself. Despite this being a kid's movie, the scene hit hard since I grew up like Mei, living for the validation of my parents until I started YouTube. When I started YouTube, my parents tried deleting this channel and said it was embarrassing and hated I showed this side of me to the internet. And I knew that if I continued doing so, my relationship with my family will never be the same. But just like Mei, instead of being embarrassed or ashamed, I embraced it and continued, knowing I'm going to live for myself. So I actually appreciate a film like this being made and hoping can give more courage to Asians who feel trapped and obligated to do everything their parents command them since parents believe they always know what's best. And although I do think in general kids should look up to and listen to their parents, we also have to acknowledge some parents can take it a bit too far with East Asian countries like Korea, Japan, and China having one of the highest suicide rates in the world, largely due to the expectations, stress, and pressure put forth by the parents. Anyway, moving on, May finds her friends and apologizes for not standing up for them. And Miriam's like, girl, it's too late. Nobody likes you. So May's like, okay. You know she's bluffing, right? Stop. Yeah, she can't stop worrying about you. As Miriam admits she's been taking care of May's Tomogachi. Besties forever? Besties forever. Huh? Tyler? Ah, oh my gosh, come here. And with May's mom approaching, the concert starts with a Walmart BDS member. 사랑해요. Mwah. <laughs> but the concert gets disrupted by May's mama. Where's my May May? While May's whole family somehow gets into the concert. I'm not your little May May anymore. What? I like boys, I like K-pop music, and I like twerking! <laughs> and while distracted, the dad and random old Asian man prepares the ritual. <laughs> oh, your breath stink all. Oh. You like it when I shake my ass, mommy? <laughs> and with the auntie starting the ritual, May headbutts her mom out of the circle. And when May tries pulling her back in but can't because the mom's too heavy, Granny breaks the seal to save her daughter and the aunties join in also. So while they all pull together with the help of her friends and four town, with this part being kinda cringe, the ritual successfully begins. Uh, mama? <laughs> Whoa. It's all my fault. I'm never gonna be good enough for her. So May finds out it's a never-ending cycle of wanting validation and approval from your parents no matter which generation. And that her mom only raised it that way because it was the only method she knew how, thinking it's what's best for May May. So this film teaches to not hate your parents for the scars they may have given you because they had their reasons also, but at the same time, a parent shouldn't hate their kids for choosing a life that may be different from theirs. Fun fact, the words I love you are not mentioned in this film once. Very realistic Asian film. And with one by one sealing their red panda away, the mom makes a final attempt and asks May May to seal hers too. Now this scene was a bit unrealistic because the mom became supportive of Mei Mei, instead of disowning her like what Asian parents would normally do. But perhaps this is the kind of response we wanted from our parents when deciding to live a different life from theirs, and is actually a scene some parents can definitely learn from. Ultimately, although I understand people might not like this film because they can't relate to any of it, or as a parent that just wants good obedient kids, this film shouldn't be one of the worst Pixar films when it's a film so many people can resonate with while giving exposure to the Asian immigrant experience. And the movie ends with the mom's red panda sealed in the Tomogachi and the temple business booming thanks to Mei's red panda, basically showing how Mei and her parents can still happily coexist with one another. I avoided watching this film for the longest time because I was told it was trash, but I'm glad to have watched a film that by far exceeded my expectations. Because if this is one of Pixar's worst films ever, then it's clearly underrated. But again, feel free to disagree. It's been your boy KC. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, till next time.